Hello, Woodland parents, and welcome to the Parent Academy webinar, Using Mac and Via Resources to Enhance Learning, presented by Jesse Garris, Media and Educational Technology Instructor, on October 31st, 2019. Our agenda for today, we're going to start with an introduction, go over the objectives of the webinar, learn how to access Mac and Via, locate ebooks in Mac and Via, locate databases in Mac and Via, and then we'll have an opportunity for you to get my information so you can send me questions and the link for the parent survey. My name is Jesse Garris. I am the METI, or also known as a librarian at Woodland Elementary. I absolutely love working in the library and being able to help children nurture and grow a love of reading. I also love being able to give them the tools necessary to be independent learners. And that's pretty much where this webinar came from. So I can share with you all of the resources that are, they already have available to them located in Mac and Via. So the purpose is to locate res different resources in Mac and Via that can be used at home to enhance learning. By the end of this webinar, you should be able to log into Mac and Via using your child's username and password, locate ebooks and filter those ebooks based on your child's Fontes and Pinnell reading level, and locate and access basic databases. So first and foremost, we need to access Mac and Via. You'll need to log in to Mac and Via using your child's FCS username and password. You do need to type in the exact address located at the bottom of this slide. If you try and Google Launchpad or ClassLink, it will pull you up to the general login site and you'll need a district code. I don't have access to what the district code is, so you do need to type in the actual address that's at the bottom of the site. Once you get logged in, you're going to click on the eLibrary tile. After clicking on the eLibrary tile, you're going to click on the tile for Mac and Via. It looks like a colorful pinwheel. Once you are logged into Mac and Via, this is the landing page that you will see. So the landing page is also the groups page, and we'll dive in a little bit further um, as to what the purpose of the groups page is. So here's your landing page. We have the groups page off to the left hand side. That's where we're actually located in Mac and Via right now. And we will dive in more um, as to what the groups page is. You have the option of a list and tile view while you are in Mac and Via. List view looks like the picture on the left. Tile view, if you click these four little squares in the top right, near the top um, of your screen, you're gonna get it in tile view. So tile view actually has just the covers of the books. Students I have found typically prefer tile view over list view. Um, one student said it reminds her of the apps, the app tiles like on the phone. Um, and they really, for some reason, they just prefer looking at the pictures. Uh, they don't want to read through all of the words. So a lot of times when my kids are navigating through Mac and Via, I have them change it to tile view. This, the other benefit is that you can actually see more results at one time. So sometimes when you pull up a lot of different results and it's in list view, it's actually hard to look through all of that material. And with tile view, you can scan and find what you're looking for quickly. We also have an all resources tab. Now I don't generally use the all resources tab because I feel like it's an overload of information. This actually puts all 1,446 eBooks, databases, audiobooks, videos, and links in one section. Um, and I have found that that's usually just way too much for students to try and filter through. We have the categories section. So the categories section is where you can find eBooks categorized um, by uh, category, which makes sense, um, but we'll dive into that a little bit later. Now, we are going to dig a little bit deeper. So use the group section to find resources that support curriculum. So the group section, that's also your landing page on Mac and Via, this is where I have already taken all of the eBooks and I have put them into groups that match content standards. 
So for example, if your child is learning about addition strategies, I have made a group called Math the Four Operations, and that's where we would have any ebooks that have to do with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. I also put some videos in there, some web links. If there's a relevant database, that's where it's going to go as well. So if you're looking for information that is directly aligned to curriculum standards, this would be your best starting point. For ebooks, if you're looking for ebooks, this is where you need to go if you're planning to filter books based on reading level. So we have ebooks, if you click on the left hand side where it says ebooks, you can actually filter all of these books down to your child's Fontes and Pinnell reading level or even their Lexile range. There's also a green um, box at the bottom that says load more always 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 load more because it might only show the first 24 results and you might be missing out on the last 36 results that just didn't populate on that page so digging deeper filtering ebooks so we're going to filter based on the Fontes and Pinnell level so on the left hand side of your screen underneath where it says groups and categories and ebooks and all of that if you scroll down a little bit further there is an advanced search option and you're going to click on Fontes and Pinnell. So first you have the sliding scale of Fontes and Pinnell. It goes all the way from A to Z. Now not every single book in our ebook library has a correlation to Fontes and Pinnell. So that's why we have over 1000 ebooks, but only 827 have a, a Fontes and Pinnell level associated with the book. Um, so to find your Fontes and Pinnell range, you're going to actually slide the two boxes from left to right. When I'm working with students and I'm telling them to find a range, I have them identify what their independent reading level is. So for example, if your child is at an independent reading level of H, then his or her reading level is going to be, or reading range is going to be from G to I. So that's going to actually include G, H, I. If their reading level R, it's actually going to be a reading range of Q, R, S. Once you have slid the two boxes to the range that you need, you click the apply button. The apply button will then give you all of your results. So it will show you what your filter is. So I made a filter of Fontes and Pinnell levels G, H, I. And if I want to go back in clear everything out, all I have to do is click on the X and that will clear all of my filters. To access your ebooks, you just simply click open now. If you have to log in again, that's going to be your child's username and password. Now one thing I have found with ebooks, um, some of them work and some of them don't. Sometimes I've told the students to just get in the habit that if you try to open an ebook and it doesn't work, all you have to do is close that tab and then find a different ebook. For some reason, we're having some issues between uh, Fullit, which is one of our ebook providers, and Mac and Via. They're not really talking to each other, um, and we are trying to work on that. There's also a little heart that if your child or you, you're really interested in the book, you can click on the heart and that will save the book to your child's favorites. And I can um, talk about that in just a second. So if you wanna find eBooks based on interest instead of Fontes and Pinnell level, the categories page is gonna be where you wanna go. We actually have a graphic novel section, a science section, a social studies section, animals, fairy tales, language, supernatural. Um, and this is where the eBooks, and it's just eBooks, are categorized based on their category or like their genre. Um, I keep saying category, but it's really based on their genre. So if your child is really into the graphic novels, then this would be the best way to figure out, okay, so let's find a graphic novel and then we'll filter down using the Fontes and Pinnell option. But categories definitely take some time and explore the different categories.
So with databases, and I, I don't know if I put a slide about the favorites in, um, I might have to, the favorites, let me just talk about that really quick. Um, the favorites, there's a book bag towards the top of the screen of every child's login screen of Mac and Via. So they're logged in and there's a little book bag at the top. It's a green book bag. If you click on that and click on favorites, that's where it's going to show you all of those books that you've saved. So they don't have to go through the process of finding their Fontes and Pinnell reading range over and over and over again. All right, so now we're going to dig a little deeper um, into databases. So on the left hand side, if you click on databases where the globe is, that's going to populate the results of all of our databases. Animal Kingdom is an excellent resource. Um, it's really for grades, I would say grades two through five. Um, it has information about all sorts of animals, um, even dinosaurs and extinct animals and animal habitats. Lots of students use this um, during their nonfiction writing units that they have to do. We also have access to BrainPop and BrainPop Junior. BrainPop, I would recommend for grades three through five. BrainPop Junior, I would recommend for grades pre-K through second. One thing to note on BrainPop, because it's for the older grades, there are also videos about the human body and human development. So that's just one thing to keep in mind if your child wants to go on Brain Pop or Brain Pop Junior. Definitely monitor them if you don't want them looking at that information. Definitely monitor them um, and what they're accessing because that is located on Brain Pop for the grades three through five. Um, I just want to point that out because sometimes it's like, whoa, hey, where did that information come from? So I definitely wanted to point that out to everyone. But for grades pre-K through second, um, they have all sorts of fun videos, um, well, grades three through five too, where Moby, he's the robot, um, he just does a series of beeps to, to talk, but they take these questions and a lot of them are content-based. Um, and then they do their best to answer those questions through a short video. So video, the Brain Pop videos are about five minutes long on average. Um, they also have games and uh, different activities that you can do as well. Britannica School Elementary is for grades two through five. It's an online encyclopedia and it's a great database to search curriculum related content. Uh, Britannica School Elementary is pretty much like having that big, huge set of encyclopedia um, encyclopedias, I, I know I had it. I actually had the, you know, the ones that smelled so great, the leather, leather bound ones, the pages were super, super thin. Um, my parents had a whole collection of them. Um, but the problem was they would go get outdated very quickly. So now Britannica School Elementary has moved those encyclopedias online and they've actually changed the language that's used to make it kid appropriate. Um, when you go into Britannica, some information you can only find on level one, level two, or level three. Um, some information you can find on all three levels. Level one would be elementary, level two would be middle school, level three would be high school. I definitely tell the students on certain things, don't click on level two or level three. Um, it is a good idea if you want your child to search something in particular, you do the search first or you search with them so you can kind of monitor what they're doing. National Geographic Kids. Now this isn't necessarily a database, it's actually a website, but it's good for grades one through five and it's great for general exploration of various topics. Um, of course, with National Geographic, it's more life sciences, um, more animals and habitats, but they also include uh, different short videos about other topics as well. PebbleGo is the absolute hands down best database for grades pre-K through one. They have four sections in PebbleGo. They have an animal section, a science section, biographies, and social studies. And the really cool thing about PebbleGo, PebbleGo is that it is like kid-friendly language and we'll, we'll read to them. Now Britannica can read to them as well, but Brit the PebbleGo actually reads slow enough to where the kids can understand it. Um, and the kids, it has vibrant pictures. There's not too much on, too many words on the screen at one time. It was definitely designed for pre-KK and one students. 
Wonderopolis, um, again, is not a database. It is actually a website, but it is geared for grades three and up, and it's great for kids that just want to know more about everything, like just random questions. How does a plasma ball work? Well, instead of Googling it, because Google can pull up all sorts of things that you don't want to see, instead of Googling it, having them go to Wonderopolis to look up the question might actually be the best thing. And that concludes the Mac and Via presentation. Um, if you have any more questions for me, because I, I kind of just skimmed over everything, it's kind of hard to dig into um, each of the databases, but I can definitely put additional videos up for each of the databases that kind of digs in a little bit more. Um, I didn't want to give be want this to be too content heavy to where you got bogged down. Um, but just definitely spend some time in Mac and Via playing with um, all the different resources that we have, the ebooks, the filters that you can do. Go to the databases. If you ever have any issues logging in or accessing some of the, the ebooks or the databases, please send me an email. My email is garrisj at fultonschools.org. So thank you so much for joining me today. To access the parent survey, please go to the link listed. The magic word for today's webinar is pumpkin uh, for Halloween. Be sure to enter the magic word so your child can receive their paw pack point. Um, I look forward to the next webinar that we're going to have. We have another one coming up on November 7th. Um, and please, if you have any questions, just send me an email. Thank you so much.